We are custodians of the country. The country owns us. This is the uh, Nambi Mangari country. We are the Aurora people. You know that people before you, that are part of you, are part of the country. And my mother is a Aurora woman. My grandfather, his father, and him before him, they've all had roles in the country. If you look after it, the country will look after you. Big wild bushfires, out of control, they could you know, damage a lot of stuff. In our country, we have a lot of communities, housing, a lot of food, a lot of wildlife we like to hunt for, a lot of trees, a lot of cattle, and with the wrong fire, we could turn out bad. Those big late season fires destroys everything. Wild bushfires also cause a lot of smoke and greenhouse gases. Scientists say that too much greenhouse gases going into the air is the main worry for climate change. To help reduce greenhouse gases, the Australian government has set up initiatives to help landowners look after and manage their country better. This initiative lets landowners earn money for projects that cut down the amount of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases in the air. Participating native title groups will receive money from selling carbon credits from the project back to companies. One carbon offset project that started brings together good fire management and good carbon business. The North Kimberley Fire Abatement Project uses the Savannah Burning Method. That's for a country that gets over a thousand millimeters of rain a year, and it's happening in four areas. The Wanambal Gambra, Palangara, Willingen, and Dambi Mangari. These groups have been able to set up carbon projects based on their registered native title. I am on the steering group committee for the Carbon Initiative Group, and what we do is get together looking at how we go about burning. We are doing some burning around our country, our homeland, so we can um, you know, restore our vegetation and our animals. If you don't manage it very well, the vegetation gets really big and there's more from the previous year. Say when the grass is like all turning brown. Lightning strikes and we could have bushfires, you know. The burning I knew about was tradition burning. It dates back thousands of years, maybe. Our ancestors used to do it by the seasons. To produce new growth, then it's good for hunting as well. My people used to use the seasons as a pattern, so I suppose we'd maybe burn some areas and then hunt there and then maybe move another area. And that way you're doing two things. You're getting fresh food, but also the country itself, like you're doing a little bit of burning here, a little bit of burning, then you wouldn't get caught in a wildfire. Countrymen and scientists have come together to study how fires work in different conditions and different seasons. They proved that if they burn country during the early dry season and at different times of the day, they could control the spread and power of those bigger bushfires in the late dry season. What needs to be burnt like it can grow real high and cause major bushfires. So for burning off, they can just go in the beginning of the dry season because of the you know dampness in the, the dew. And you don't get those big hot late season fires. People before us did it and Generations later, we were doing the same thing in a more modern way these days. Come here to do aerial burning, dropping incendiary capsules. Nowadays, we have rain dance machines. It's called an incendiary machine, and there's these little capsules and glycol. This machine sort of that is injecting this capsule with glycol that shoots through the pipe going under the aircraft onto the ground and it takes about 30 seconds and then it ignites grass. Only a handful of people live in the country so there's not much traditional burning happening anymore. Especially in our country, like there's a lot of area to cover. It's not like we can do bulldozing to do clearing for fire breaks and stuff. It's really hard to get to. Helicopter, it helps because we can go right to the place where we're supposed to go. So, yeah, aerial burning fills in the gap. If you do early burning and stuff when you fly over these days, you're not looking at a big black um, land. You're, you're looking at some spots that are really greener because it's given early burning. And if you manage it right, you can do it, uh, I suppose. If, if you let it go, it will go. So greenhouse gases going into the air can be cut down by burning country in the early dry season, around March and April. This method will also decrease the area of land that's burned each year. 
Managing fires the right way makes our soil more healthy and helps our trees and bushes to grow strong. And there are other benefits for people on the ground. First of all, it does um, getting people back to country. Well, before I joined the range and stuff, we were just basically stuck in town and never had chances to go out. But Ranger gave us an opportunity to see a part of our country that we didn't see. You know, old people before us, generations back, got dragged from their country. Nowadays, we want to go back and be attached to it again. Secondly is employment. It takes people out of town and back into country and working. And they're doing what they should be doing. It's, um, you know, your customary right to and your role to, to be doing this. Like, it's, um, no one else can't do it, but we've got to do it. The other point is it provides funds so we can do stuff in country. Logistically, it's really expensive getting back to country, you know, fuel-wise, like all these things. They all add up and the offset initiative generates money for us so we can get back to country and identify those places. We have to protect. We're sort of being independent on our own, like a business, and it's money coming back into country. Us leading the way in this carbon offset initiative, you show other people. I suppose with all of us doing it together, it's probably the right thing to do. So I guess if we save a lot of the greenhouse gas that do go in there, we're playing our part in saving the world. When we do go back to country, it sort of cleanses somebody. And you won't know it unless you're there. You never know what you'll see. Chopper went right up to the border of where my country ends up north. And you look at the sights and yeah, it's amazing. Hidden waterfalls and paintings that I never thought that they were there. It makes my spirit feels alive. The North Kimberley Fire Abatement Project is for a country across the north of this region. But another fire management project which can include groups in the central Kimberley is the Savannah Burning Project for a country with 600 to 1,000 millimeters of rainfall a year. The Savannah Burning Method has registered projects with government. But it's hard to know how much money a carbon business can make. So it's important to plan ahead to make sure your project is worthwhile. The set of rules for this project will be available soon. To find out more about fire management, Contact the Kimberley Land Council. Uh, well, we should all head in that direction.